Hello and good afternoon. My name is Maggie McCullough, and I am the CEO and founder of Policy Map. For those of you who don't know Policy Map, we are an online data and mapping application that makes tens of thousands of indicators related to demographics, incomes and spending, uh, quality of life, education, health, and much more available in a web-based online mapping application. As part of our special series, using data and maps to help communities address the COVID-19 pandemic, I'd like to take just two minutes to talk about hospital capacity and how data can help us identify where additional beds may be needed most. As a COVID pandemic, is really exploding right now in the United States. Our government agencies, hospitals, and other institutions are taking stock of their hospital capacity for the surge that they are anticipating of severe COVID-19 cases. And in some communities, we are hearing this morning that hospitals will run out of beds in a matter of weeks, and they're starting to create field facilities, field health facilities, to accommodate patients with COVID-19. And now it goes without saying that this is entirely unprecedented. But as I said before, maps can help us do much more than just track the spread of this virus. They can help us prepare and strategically target scarce resources. And in this case, data can potentially help us think about where additional beds might be needed most. So to do this, let's pick a location, and I'll pick Washington, D.C., which currently has its share of COVID-19 cases, and they're expecting that to grow, and hospital workers are beginning to prepare for a surge in cases. So now that we've taken the map to D.C., we can think about the hospital resources that already exist in this place. And we can do that by first loading hospitals. And I'm going to make these hospital points red and bigger so that we can more clearly see them on the map. And I'm gonna add boundaries. I'm gonna add hospital service areas so we can see the areas that these hospitals uh, are designated to serve. So this starts to give us a sense of which hospitals are in the area and where they are located. So then we can then load the number of hospital beds per person age 65 or older to see where there may be fewer resources for those at risk because of their age. people 65 or older per hospital bed. So when I put this layer on, what we're seeing here is that the darkest purple areas on the map are those areas where there are 137 people or more for every hospital bed, per hospital bed, um, 137 people age 65 or older per hospital bed. The lighter areas have a better ratio than these darker areas to the east of, of, of Washington. So if we think about this layer in combination with people who may be more at risk for the COVID-19 virus because of an underlying health condition like COPD, so COPD, um, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, emphysema, chronic bronchitis, these are conditions that the CDC has indicated make people more vulnerable to severe COVID-19. And if we look at those places that have more than 5% of people who have ever been diagnosed, we can see that the map has changed. And we're now looking at places 
that have um, where 100 people 65 years or older have access to one hospital bed and more than 5% of adults have one of these underlying chronic conditions. These dark purple areas you see are potential hot spots of severity due to the compounded risk factors and the limited capacity. And for those hospitals, and we can zoom in a little bit, and for these hospitals that sit in some of these you know, areas that are potentially more at risk, this data can help hospitals think about where additional supports may be most needed. As hospitals and public health officials think through adding resources to address the pandemic, understanding what they could potentially be facing um, will help to allocate, help to inform uh, resource decisions. If you'd like to stay up to date with developments at Policy Map or learn more about our data, please visit our website at policymap.com and sign up for our newsletter. Good afternoon and thank you.